Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got 11 new things to know about the new Sunto 9 Peak. Now, while it looks significantly different, and it definitely is significantly different on the outside, there's also a ton of differences on the inside, both on the hardware as well as the software. So in this video, I'm going to dive through all those new things and explain how all things work, both the good and the bad, uh, and kind of dig into all the details of them. This video definitely is not sponsored. These are just media loaner units. They'll go back to Sunto when I'm done. The first item on the list is actually freebie. It's not part of 11 things, which is the price. There's two different versions. There's a higher version for 699 euros or $699 that has a titanium case to it versus the cheaper version, if you will, is 569 euros or $569. There's two colors offered at each one. But internally beyond that, they're all the same in terms of features and functionality, battery life, all the kind of stuff is identical. And both units have sapphire glass on them to help them from scratching and whatnot. Uh, so no differences there either. Now for the first item on the list, we're gonna need to change things up a little bit. So, how's this? Okay, there we go, this is what we're talking about. Welcome to my town, my village. Let's talk about Sundo's new snap to route feature. I'd argue this is probably like one of the most innovative things out there, yet at the same time, I am sure every other GPS company is going like, you totally just cheated. And let me explain how it works. So snap to route is exactly what the name implies. It's going to go ahead and take your GPS track, the one it records and you upload to Strava or Training Peaks or whatever the case, and it's going to snap it to your route, the route that you predefined ahead of time. Uh, now there's some exceptions there, which is why I've got this crazy thing all set up to kind of explain it to you. But first you'll go ahead and you'll create a route in the Sunto app um, or import route into the Sunto app with GPX files or something like Komoot. And then once it's in there, you sync it to your watch. Then on your watch, you'll go ahead and choose a sport mode that you want, and you'll go on down into the navigation of that sport mode. There you'll see the option to snap to route, and you'll simply choose the route that you want to snap to. At that point, you just simply run like normal, and you have your breadcrumb trail like normal, and you've got turn-by-turn -turn navigation like normal. Except what it's doing behind the scenes is not only snapping at your GPS route, the thing that's recording your GPS track for later on, but also your pace and distance. Now, this is particularly useful in a race setting, but especially in some urban settings, like an urban marathon, half marathon, anything where there's lots of obstructions that go ahead and impact the accuracy of the data. For example, if you've done a marathon in a big city where you've had those buildings obstruct your GPS track, they could add distance to it incorrectly, so you think you're further ahead than you are or further behind than you are, which also impacts your pacing, uh, and that in turn impacts you know, how you might do on that particular day. So I've got set up here my awesome town, uh, the finest of the DCR cave ingredients to go ahead and illustrate how this works. We got down there my little cyclist man. I couldn't find a, a Lego man or anything. I've got a cyclist man. And up here we have this orange string. This represents well, it actually represents the USB cable, but it represents the route that I've loaded through this particular city. So in this case, on this little guy right here, we drag him back to the beginning. Tough life there, dude. Uh, so he started at the beginning there, and he's cruising down the road, and he goes off and he gets a beer at the brewery, and that's fine. In this case, though, his GPS track is showing this orange line right here, which it's, it's the line that the original route was based on. It's also a USB cord. Uh, and then from there, he goes over here, and he goes to this bush, and he does his business there. And nobody later on is the wiser in Strava. Nobody's given a hard time for hitting the draft house or the bush because all they see is this orange line. And the reason the snapping matters in this particular context is because when you're in a city environment and that GPS track has you plotted over behind this bush and behind the peanuts and on the other side of the rigatonis and behind the cornflakes, and because in a typical city environment where it's going to plot extra GPS points over here and over here and over there, it's largely adding distance. And when it adds distance, it speeds up your pace. So you think you're running faster than you are or cycling faster than you are. Whereas in this case, what Sunto is doing is saying you are closest to this point right here, thus that is where you should be. And based on the wrist-based accelerometer for running in that case, it goes ahead and snaps you to that particular location on the map. Thus, no matter what happens within reason right here, it's going to keep this perfect GPS track after that. And I'll show you this exact same thing. The question is, what happens if you go away from the track, right? So let's say this little guy is coming down over here and he turns between Peanut Lane there and Cornflakes Tower. So he's made his turn right there and he says, I am breaking free and boom, he's off. At this point, he has left the course. And the threshold there is a bit fuzzy. In my testing, it seems about 100 meters. You can go about 100 meters off the course before you finally break free of it. And once you break free of it, no matter where you go, it's gonna record that actual GPS track. All is great. If you get yourself close to the course again, boom, it snaps back on and you're back on the course. So how does this work in the real world? Pretty darn well. 
So I went out this morning for a run through the city, like the biggest buildings I could find, 25 to 30 story buildings up and down. And I went basically like all through these buildings, making a complete mess of things on a horrendously hard GPS track. Here is the Suunto 9 Peak on this side, and here is the Suunto 9 Barrow, the previous generation on this side right here. You can see a massive difference in those GPS tracks. And on all of my test runs I've done thus far, things are really, really good. It snaps to it. I've been going back and forth on the same route. I've done all sorts of crazy lollipop routes, and it's been like spot on. But it's only spot on when I tell it to be spot on, meaning only when I have that route loaded. Uh, and there's some cases where if I've incorrectly done the route and I run somewhere, it'll snap me into that route. For example, there's a farm road I did last night, two nights ago, that has snapped me out into the pasture because that's where I actually accidentally drew the route, as opposed to farm road that was less than 100 meters away. You also see scenarios in the mountains and stuff where the mapping, the underlying data on the map itself isn't super accurate about where exactly the trail is, especially like switchbacks where you go back and forth. A lot of times that mapping data is not at all correct. Uh, and so in that case, you may not want to use this because you're going to short yourself on that distance because it's going to cut through some of those switchbacks. Still, this is super cool for race day where you want that GPS track to look good. You want your pacing data and your distance data to be accurate during the race. That's all you really care about. And of course, your actual race time. You don't care about having a GPS track going into buildings and all that kind of junk. Okay, with everything cleared out of the way here, if you're finding this video interesting, useful, informative, entertaining, something like that, simply whack that like button there or the subscribe button. It really helps with this channel and the video quite a bit. So the next new feature is the new optical heart rate sensor. Uh, now this optical heart rate sensor is by LifeQ. It's the same sensor company uh, that developed the Suunto 7 sensor. Uh, I didn't have terribly great luck there, but things are reasonably good here thus far. Uh, in beta testing anyways, uh, you can see it's a, it's a beta build. So I'm not going to judge them too harshly for at this point, uh, but it does seem to be working fairly well. So, uh, so far so good. Stay tuned to my full in review, probably coming later on in June, uh, where I'll dive into all the sensor accuracy at that point in time. As part of that new sensor package though, there's also another new feature, which is the blood oxygen sensor, uh, or SpO2 sensor, or what Garmin would call like their pulse ox sensor, all the same thing, doesn't really matter what you call it, uh, essentially measuring your blood oxygen levels. The reason that's interesting is primarily high altitude hiking. Uh, certainly it's also interesting like in sleep and stuff like that, monitoring, but in this context, Suunto is primarily doing, or entirely doing it right now, for high altitude monitoring. Uh, the idea being you can put this on your wrist, do a spot check of your blood oxygen level. This is something we've seen on plenty of other watches. It's definitely not new, but it is certainly new to Suunto. In my testing of this, it's still, I would say, beta as well right now. We're doing side-by-side -side testing with a medically certified pulse oximeter here in the EU, uh, I'm seeing pretty wide variations. Uh, Suunto says this is something they're working on though, for final release, so I'm not going to judge them too harshly at this point in time on that. Uh, again, waiting till my final review sometime later in June. Now, the next feature actually ties into that because those updates that will hopefully fix those issues will come wirelessly now, which I know sounds sort of obvious and silly, but in the past, if you wanted to update this watch here, the Suunto 9 Barrow, you had to go ahead and plug this into a computer and update it that way. You couldn't actually update it wirelessly at Bluetooth, but wireless updates are here now. Uh, so the way it works is that you can manually force a wireless update if you want to using your phone, uh, with with the watch, or it just will do it automatically behind the scenes at night. As long as there is a firmware update ready to go, it'll feed it to your watch quietly, and in the middle of the night, it'll install it, and the next morning, you'll notify it via a simple uh, message in the Suunto app that your watch has new firmware. It works pretty much just like how most other watches work. I like it, it's, it's the way things should be. Kudos. Next, it's worthwhile noting the screen is new here, and not bigger though, but actually smaller. If you look side by side between the two screens, uh, you'll notice that there's the bezel portion, the black piece right there, uh, and then in that is the actual screen itself. In the case of the uh, Suunto 9 Peak, it's 1.2 inches, uh, so definitely a bit smaller, like you can see it if I put it like this side by side, uh, that it's a smaller screen than the previous one. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much difference in terms of the screen quality. Uh, it seems about the same to me looking at it, you know, out in runs, in bright sunlight, and rainy days inside, all that kind of stuff seems about the same. However, one new feature though is the next one, which is the new ambient light sensor. So if you look at the very, very bottom right there, it's almost impossible to tell, but you can see it flicker right there. Also, you can see my fingerprints on the screen. It's a fingerprint magnet. Nothing you can do about that. It looks really nice beyond that, but fingerprint magnet for sure. Uh, there's a tiny little ambient light sensor that'll automatically use the data from that to go ahead and turn on the display when appropriate. And I say when appropriate, meaning there's an entire table as to when it's appropriate. And thus far, using it in the default settings, it works great. Like, 
I was learning today underneath some tunnels and stuff, uh, and the ambient light sensor came on when I raised my wrist up uh, because I was underneath the tunnels. Yet when I was outside in the bright sunlight, it didn't turn on because it didn't need it. Like it's it's perfect. You can change and tweak this if you want to. Keep in mind the display is always on. So just to be really clear about this, this is not like an older Apple Watch or whatnot where it turns off. The display is always on here. This is all about the backlight brightness. Uh, and again, kudos to them. This just works. I don't think about it. I haven't thought about it. It's always there. But if you want to tweak it, you can go and, and geek ahead, no problem at all. Okay, so next there's another new feature, hardware focus in this case, which is faster charging. Uh, so you may have noticed when I flipped this over earlier that the back is different. These two uh, doohickeys right there are your charging ports. And if I grab the charging cable, that's not the right charging cable. This is the charging cable. Uh, you'll see it's quite a bit different than the past. In the past, you had to align uh, across these little four dots right there with this magnet. And in theory, it worked good. In practice, it always like it was never perfectly aligned. It was super frustrating. In this case, though, you just stick it on and it basically is happy as long as it's not like at the worst possible point. But I don't think you can even get there. Like it doesn't stay in that point because then the magnets pull it to the other points. It, it works really well. Like I've got no complaints about it. Also, more importantly to people is that it's fast charging enabled. Uh, so Sinto says now it can go the entire watch fully charged in one hour. Uh, and playing around with it this morning, I went from like 11% to 33% in seven minutes. Uh, so it's pretty quick, at least for that first chunk. Most of the time, fast charging uh, is good to like the 90% level. And then the last 10% or so, it tends to be a bit slower. Uh, but I was happy for needing to go out and do a run and sure I had battery. It was great. Speaking of battery life, here's the full specs on the screen right now of all those battery life metrics and stats and all that kind of stuff. That in fact gets to another new feature which technically came out on the Sunto 9 Barrow back a few months ago, which is the new tour mode. What this does is it reduces the GPS frequency update uh, significantly so that it goes ahead and it can get more points over a longer period of time. This is really only useful if like you're going across Africa or something like that. It's not really something you want to use day to day for even hiking or even most ultras uh, because it's just it reduces the track points down so much that again it's it's not super useful it's more of a marketing thing i think sunto would probably agree with me there as well but when other companies did it sunto had to do it as well next there's the new ghost runner data page via sunto plus so sunto plus is like the section of the watch that you can add a single data page to different sport profiles Think of it as like widgets for sport profiles, except only configurable on a given sport profile and you have to do one at a time, you can't have multiple of them. In theory, it started off as an idea where they could introduce sort of like beta-ish features to the watch. Uh, in practice, it probably needs to grow up to be like a real data field, uh, but it's not there yet today. Anyways, the point is that the Ghost Runner page basically allows you to take the split of your first kilometer or mile, and then it matches that for all future miles. So the idea being that if you start off pacing a marathon, for example, you do your first split or mile hopefully at the right pace and it'll compare that as a virtual partner of sorts for the rest of your race again it's sort of like a stopgap to what other companies have around like a virtual partner virtual race or virtual something idea not quite perfect i think it needs a bit more refinement but as like a stopgap it it's a stopgap. It is what the name implies. Now, next is another one, which is the ability to change your watch face to a white watch face. Now, this is something that a lot of people may not like the black watch face look to it. So this allows you to swap it over to a white background as opposed to a black background. Uh, I was pretty excited about this at first. And then I realized there's so much extra bezel space there that yeah, it kind of looks a little awkward to be honest, but uh, I appreciate the thought. I think if like the white one here had had been a white outer edge, it might not have looked that bad. But uh, for me, my taste, it's not really my cup of tea. Now, the last item though is something that is pretty handy, uh, which is that when you do the first time setup of these watches now, a lot more of the information from the Sunto app is pushed to the watch as opposed to doing it all on the watch itself or mostly on the watch itself. Uh, in particular, one neat tiny little thing, which is the date and time. Uh, forever, you've always had to go outside and get GPS the first time uh, Sunto watch is set up aside from the, the Sunto 7, which is because it's Wear OS. But for the rest of the lineup, you always had to do that outside, which was just like one bit of hassle to in the middle of the winter, go outside, stand there and wait for your GPS. It just syncs it automatically so you have the right date and time from the beginning. I like it. So there you go, a complete look at the new Asunto 9. Uh, if you check out my full like it'll preview right now, but eventually end up review, link down below. I've got a bunch more accuracy data and that kind of stuff on heart rate and GPS over time. Uh, but like I said, right now they're shipping at the end of June, so about a month away. Uh, then I'll dive into some of the accuracy bits once they have the final firmware on these particular watches. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and watch that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Got a bunch more coming, including like in three hours from now, or four hours, or something like that. So with that, have a good one.